Okay, hi everybody, this is Pilar Gerasimo with Experience Life Magazine, and I'm so happy to be talking with Chris Carr today. Many of you know Chris Carr is a New York Times best-selling author. We're very proud that she graced our cover way back in 2011, when so many people didn't even realize what amazing, amazing stuff she did in the world. Um, and since then, she's done a great, great deal. We're going to talk about some of her most recent projects today. But I want to start by, Chris, thank you so much for talking with us, first of all, and taking time out of your very busy schedule to be with us today. Thank you for having me again and again. I'm so grateful, Pilar. Oh, it's such a pleasure. It's an, it's been, it's an odyssey to witness all of the incredible things that you've done. And for folks who don't know you as well as we know you, I would love if you could just recap for people a little bit about how you got from where you were not so very long ago to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. So I think like most people who change their life, you know, it, it can be very unexpected. So prior to 2003, really, is when my life changed. I was living in New York. I was in a different career. I wasn't feeling so hot. You know, I was I was having a great time, but I was also struggling in a lot of ways and certainly struggling with my health and my emotional life and my love life. <laughs> and I got diagnosed with this very rare and incurable advanced cancer. And that was the turning point for me, as it is for so many people. And What's interesting about my disease, it's a it's a sarcoma, but there's very little known about it. And though it can be slow moving, it can also be aggressive. And for me, there's no treatment. And so when I was first looking for an oncologist or somebody that could be a part of my wellness team, you know, they basically didn't give me a lot of good news or a lot of good options. And then I decided I was going to really find and create the best team for my disease and my overall well-being. And so I went on this search. And throughout the course of the search, I started to learn so much, so many things that I wish I had known when I was younger. I wish I had known before, um, but I was very passionate and excited about what I was learning. And so ultimately, I decided with the help of my medical team to take what they call a watch and win approach. And I call it washing and living rather than waiting. <laughs> yeah, waiting sounds kind of ominous, like, wait for it. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's a bit more empowering. And so during the year, I decided, well, you know, I go and get my CAT scans now every two years. What am I going to do in between? How am I going to support this? Day? How am I going to support my lifestyle? Like, can I still have big dreams? What do I want to be when I grow up? You know, even though I'm living with cancer, I... I as though I still really wanted to feel good and make a difference in the world. And so um, that's how it all started, through my own exploration and then sharing what I had learned. Uh, it's been a really cool kind of crazy, sometimes sexy, not sexy journey. <laughs> I think it's mostly been sexy from the outside. The good, I don't know what it's like in your real world, but looking at you from uh, afar anyway, it's, it's predominantly very sexy and very cool. And I think that one of the things that I admire so much about uh, what you do is it's really, it's optimistic and positive, but you're also honest about the challenges that you face and everything that you have to learn along the way by trial and error. And out of that trial and error has come a whole host of amazing things. So um, you did this amazing film um, called, was it Crazy Sexy Cancer? The name yeah. of the film? Yeah. And then you did a couple of books that came out of the knowledge base from that work. And then you kind of broke out of the cancer world and started addressing everyday people. The, the book that I think most people um, discovered you through was this Crazy Sexy Diet book, which isn't just a diet by any stretch of the imagination. It's really like a guide to healthy living and a great way to stay cancer free if you uh, are interested in doing that. But you know, you presented this 21 day adventure cleanse. And I think a lot of folks got into figuring out how to live sort of through you. And we really admired the work that you were doing enough to put you on the cover of the magazine mm, for our so audience. Nice. Oh, yeah, well, so nice to have people discover you in a, a healthier way of living. Um, I also really want to say I admire the open mindedness with which you embrace all comers. So, you know, I know you're a vegetarian vegan. I'm not even sure anymore what you vegan. Yeah. And our audience is all over the map from vegan yeah. to hardcore paleo. And most of our audience really appreciates the central elements of your message, which are illuminated in a new book that's coming out that we're going to spend some time talking about shortly. Um, but I wanted to also just say there you are doing not just books. You have just invented this very cool thing yeah. of cards. 
<laughs> Tell yeah. me about this. This is really some just beautiful and surprising, and I love them, but I want you to describe them. Oh, thank you. You know what? Along the way for me, I realized that to feel good, it's not just about what you're eating. You know, I am vegan, but I'm not a my way or the highway type of girl. Really, my goal is to get people to one, to inspire people to possibly eat more plants. That's it. And I think that there's so many great philosophies and we can find the intersection between us all. And, and, and I think what that intersection is, is eat real food, dump the junk, eat a lot of plants, right? Um, so once I figured out the diet part, I think what I really realized was it's a very small component. It's so overstressed about it and we get very fastidious and we stand on our platforms or we, you know, dig our heels in the sand because we don't want to change, want to give something up. But the truth is, is our emotions, our mental well-being, how we're relating to the world, how happy, how joyful we are, if we're depressed, too stressed. I really think that's a much bigger piece to health than many of us are giving um, credit to. And so these little love notes are basically 52 cards messages from your inner self and they're hugs. They're just, you're okay. You're awesome. Go for it. Slow down. Eat your vegetable. Yeah. Invite your fears to tea. You, know, you can do this. Let uh, me pull this one. This is so quintessentially you. <laughs> the unicorn. <laughs> and they're just whimsical and they, they tap yeah. our child, childlike energy. Absolutely. And so these are the messages that I share with myself on a daily basis so that I can be comfortable in the skin in. And also, I think the most important important piece is developing that relationship with yourself because I believe it's the core relationship. And when you have a strong relationship with yourself, I think you're pretty much able to do anything you set your mind to. Yeah. Well, I love these. They're just every card has the affirmation or the message on the front and then uh, a, a somewhat more extended message on the back that really tells you how to interpret it. And I love using these. Um, I have a three minute morning practice that I do every morning. I light a candle and I sit and I have a choice of things I can do. I can have a morning card reading like this, or I can play my guitar, or pet my dog or do yoga or just meditate straight up. But I think having tools like this for a lot of people, it's like a destination. It's something that you can go put your attention on and then you get the gift of this message back. So I suspect these are going to be super popular. We're really excited to offer, um, we have a giveaway, I think, in our upcoming issue um, that I will make sure we have a link to along with this video. But for readers who are interested in taking a shot at getting their own yes. personal deck, otherwise these are available at bookstores and through online yes. uh, channels everywhere. Messages from your wise and fabulous inner self. Love these. And these are illustrated by is it Lori Portka? Yeah, Lori Portka. So she's a friend of mine and she's a wonderful painter. And the process, this creative process, um, came together where we would talk about the sayings and talk about the intentions and affirmations. And sometimes she would come up with a painting on her own, or sometimes I would say, Wouldn't it be awesome with the, you know, say your sorry card if there was a dog and a cat reaching out, but there was like a date on the dog's cheek? <laughs> It's like, I'm sorry, you know, like, you know, cats scratch dogs. Right. Um, and I just wanted them to be playful. I also wanted people to be able to read them to their children because um, I think the messages, they run deep and there's, it's, there's no better time than the present to start early with your kids. So I wanted them to be mature but also appropriate for the whole family. Um, and they came so quickly. I mean, she the painting took longer each one is individually painted, but for me, they came so quickly, and I was like, wow, I, I really enjoyed this process. It filled me up. I love that. Well, you say you meditated on every message, and I think that that really yeah. comes through with the messages, the cards, but also the way that the, the messages on the back are articulated. They're your classic, not bossy, not preachy, <laughs> just like, be here now, love yourself the way you are, and I think those are messages that are um, a little too rare in our healthy living world, uh, unfortunately. So I, exceptional. I would recommend those to anybody. And then that's not all you've been doing. You have been busy writing another book, I understand. Yeah. Uh, and this one I only had the advanced galley for because it is still coming hot off the presses. But Crazy yeah. Sexy Juice. Tell us about this one. Yeah. So, you know, like you know, one of the biggest questions that I've received over the years how do you make a juice? How do you make a healthy juice? What's the difference between a juice and a smoothie? And I have written so many blogs and I've written so many books and I've described it, but I thought this is 
literally the number one question that gets emailed to me. I would really love to tackle this all in one place and share all of my personal recipes with my readers and new people who will hopefully become my readers. And so that was that was the reason why I just said I, I need to write this book because it's that I believe in so much and I've been talking about and certainly I was on the cover of Experience Life with the green juice in my martini glass. And yeah. <laughs> it's very classic. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the foundation of one of, of my health practices. I'd say, you know, there's so many things that we could tell people to do and oftentimes it gets them anxious because they then create this long self-care to-do list and they get a little overwhelmed. And certainly as somebody who's been a health seeker from a medical medical condition, but also because ultimately I started to feel better when I took better care of myself, I've looked into so many things and I too have gotten anxious at times. And certainly for people who don't know how to cook and they're a little intimidated by the kitchen, you know, I've written cookbooks and um, all you need is a juicer and a blender and a few tips on how to make your vegetables and your fruits taste really good. And again, like we were saying earlier, is our goal is just to encourage you to eat vegetables. And this is an easy way to do it. So It's great. You know, I think the thing that's so lovely about the timing of the book is in some ways, it feels like the past couple of years, there's been this huge increase of interest in juicing and it's become something of a fad. I think at least that's the perception. Yeah. Green juice everywhere. I recently <laughs> just had something on social where I was like, you know, I love green juice and yet... I'm starting to feel like the meme is getting overused. <laughs> and of course, there are challenges with any, you know, huge rise and surge in popularity of something. It often can get diluted and the message can get lost. And you really did a nice job in the book of reminding people, you know, this isn't about just going and getting your bottle like a Dwala juice off of the yeah. airport, you know, convenience store shelf where it's 95% sugar. It has yeah. like 500 grams of simple sugars in it. And you're like, this right. can't be good. But what you're talking about is really fundamentally whole foods, low glycemic index, really yeah. healthy, filled with phytonutrients, honest to God juice the way Mother Nature intended. And uh, they look like beautiful recipes. How many? You said it's 100 of them? Hundred and Yeah, there's about 102 recipes. It's amazing. It says juices and also smoothies and blended drinks and nut milks, which I thought yeah. was such a great addition. And I love, I've just started doing this myself, I, partially because I've been so unhappy with the direction that boxed. Um, nut milks yeah, and things have gone. They are getting kind of gelatinous and snotty. Yeah. I don't know what's the ah. what <laughs> Don't drink those. <laughs> They're nasty. So the, making the fresh ones yourself, um, you've got them in there. And I, I would love for you to just say, you know, are there a couple of do's and don'ts that you'd like to share with people to well, encourage everybody to go read the whole book, but someone who's just getting involved in juicing now, any guidelines that are simple yeah. things? You know, um, I'm not big on do's and don'ts because I think this is a very restrictive world with a lot of rules. But I will say that from my experience, um, it's best if you're a newbie to start slowly. You know, start with a few ingredients. You may find delicious recipes and crazy sexy juice, or maybe you just want to explore on your own. And I would probably avoid adding things like too much kale because it can be very strong and a bit bitter if you overdo it. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people when I'm at conferences and there's newbies in the audience and they say, it's green. I don't know. I just say, you know what? What if you like cucumber? Yes, I do. Great. We're on the right track. But if you just did cucumber, apple, do you like mint? I love mint, a little mint and a little lemon. We just keep it really simple um, because I think sometimes when we add so much stuff, yeah. It, we lose the taste, we lose the flavor combination, and um, we lose people's interest very quickly. <laughs> you know, we want to capture their interest <laughs> right away and hopefully keep it. And um, the other thing is, 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 as you said, is don't add too much sugar to it. You want to make sure that you are including vegetables in your in juice combo or in your smoothie combo. Um, and then the last thing I would say is sometimes when people come out with new products, they say, Juicing is the only way to go. And then they poo-poo smoothies or they come out with a smoothie smoothie book and then they tell you all the reasons why juice is bad. That's a marketing. Um, and the truth is, is that both of them are great. If you like one over the other, I know some people don't like the taste of smoothies or like the texture rather. It's a little too thick for them and make them a little nauseous or gaggy. Great. So you have your green juice. Some people are like, ah, you know, a little more, I need more energy throughout the course of the day. And guess what? I don't want to clean the 
faster because it takes more time. Is that okay? Whenever anybody asks me permission, I say, you are the only person who can give yourself permission. Do whichever one you prefer. And, you know, another thing that comes up is a lot of folks will say you need to drink your juice right away. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose its potency and its vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Uh, you know what? Here's what I think, folks. I think you should make a big batch and have your second glass eight hours later. <laughs> you know what I mean? When everybody else is having their coffee and cigarette break, you're going to have your juice and you're not going to be like, oh, unfortunately, this isn't healthy for me. <laughs> Depleted phytonutrients. Very no. scary. Bad thing. Yeah. No, no. It's no, no. going to be more phytonutrients than most people ate the rest yeah. of the day combined. Yeah, you're good. So take the pressure off. And if you like, if you'd like to invest or do that. If you have a blender already, just start making more smoothies. And I think that when you do it consistently, you know, especially if you could think about getting it in prior to coffee or prior to too much caffeine or whatnot, you just get a nice, strong, healthy base in your stomach. And then off you go doing whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you will better. Yeah. I love that idea. I think that approach of adding, you know, good things to your life rather than trying to take things away from people. So often we just love these crazily restrictive diets and things because yeah. they, I don't know, we think we're being good when we follow them or something, but we ended up feeling really crappy about ourselves because very few people want to sustain or can sustain those kinds of regimens. And I think the, the whole book, and really this is consistent with your other books too, is just do what you can, experiment, try these things, add them to your already lovely good life and see if it doesn't just get a little bit better. And I love that idea of just the first thing into your body being something that's healthy and nutrient dense and refreshing and rehydrating before you hit it with the super caffeine and the whatever yeah. else can you put in that concoction. Absolutely. I mean, you and I agree so many points. We've had such great conversations and dinners over this. And the truth is, is if, if French fries cured cancer, I'd be a very happy girl. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to give up French fries and I'm so, a leader in the wellness movement, you know, Bless you, um, Chris. I'm so, with you on that. <laughs> but I, I find that there's a, there are a lot of ways to balance out our diets and our lifestyles. And as long as we have that strong platform and a home base to go to, like when we don't feel well, or perhaps we've been traveling and maybe pushing it a little too hard. As long as we have that home base, that's what we're looking for. And that's what we want to create with Whole Foods. That's great. Well, I noticed the other thing that I think is lovely, I mean, you put, this is a, ostensibly a book about juicing, but even here, you've really inserted quite a lot of life wisdom and um, recommendations about rhythms, daily rhythms, things that people can do to bring more I guess, nutritious experiences into their lives, not just in the realm of food, but in how they manage their energy and their time and their stress. Um, and just, I think, kind of nurturing their more goddessy selves, mm -hmm. the women, God, God guys, I guess, if it's guys. Mm -hmm. And it's just worth pointing out, I know a lot of men who follow you and love your stuff. So it's not just for women, although I know that's probably your primary audience. <laughs> yeah. um, but talk a little bit, if you would, about how you manage in the course of everything else that you do to continue to take care of yourself and the way that you do. Like you said, you have a motivation, which is that you're still thriving yeah. with your cancer uh, business. But I think a lot of people um, feel like they are torn between accomplishing what they want to accomplish in their daily lives. I mean, our audience in particular, they tend to be really busy people with big jobs and families and plans and projects. And that sort of detracts in many cases from their commitment to taking care of themselves. Or we tell all of ourselves, I think this lie sometimes, that I'll get to taking care of myself when I'm done with X or Y or Z, or my kids get out of this phase of school or something. You've managed to do the books and the cards and the building huge community on, online through your social followings and courses online. And you're still giving talks lots of places. How do you do that and still stay true mm -hmm. to your commitment of taking care of yourself, of your bodily self on a daily basis? That's a great question. And it's something that's always changing and growing. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think we have to be very careful about being black and white about things. And for me, I was definitely one of those who said, I will learn how to take care of myself later. Fiber is for older people. <laughs> and when I become an older person, you know, this is like in my early 30s when I was diagnosed you know, right before I was diagnosed, I was like, that's a really boring life. And I will get there, I am sure. But then everything changed. And so it became very essential for me to learn how to really take care of myself, but also not shrink back and, you know, avoid the world because now I'm a cancer patient. And there's this 
known. Um, and for me, it's not about these all or nothing experiences. Like I'm going to do an all of uh, this huge push to launch a book or this huge push to launch, you know, my kid to college. My way is more of finding little um, mini vacations throughout the course of every day. That's nice. Yeah. Mini breaks throughout the course of every day so that no matter how hectic it gets in my life or how hectic it gets with my health, right, then I'm still finding a way to just take the stress down, reconnect with myself, nourish my body with a quick, quick juice or quick salad or something that's very easy Um and that's how I balance my stress. It's not somebody asked me recently, like, talk about one great adventure that you've had, or where do you go to rest and renew and you know recharge? And I said, actually, I don't go anywhere. I do it every day. And your wonderful three minute practice. Sometimes that's all it takes. And you know, we're in my little office in my home right now, and oftentimes I will just lie on the floor for five minutes and just close my eyes and just sink into the carpet and then get up and have a, a great conversation on Skype. Uh, so it's easier than we think, but it's very important that we stay mindful of, of the amount of time that we actually need to take these mini breaks. Yeah. Yeah. I love the mini breaks thing. And I've been a big fan of them since I learned about um, some defense department research that looked into ultradian rhythms, which is this whole idea that in the course of a 24 hour day, we have circadian rhythms, but people don't realize that in between we have these smaller rhythms called ultradian rhythms. The science behind this is fascinating, but it absolutely supports what you just said, which is some Thing as brief as a five or ten minute break is phenomenally powerful for basically rebooting your neurology, metabolism, mm. your immunity, and it really like improves your productivity net net throughout the course of the day. So love that idea, and also it's fun to lie down on the floor at work. I yes. freak people out occasionally by doing it here, <laughs> <laughs> and I also once took a, about a five ten minute break while I was getting my nails done. <laughs> I was like, I need to have a little rest now. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, all right, that's interesting. She said, don't be afraid to be interesting. That's right. So um, I want to just talk a little bit about one element of your work, which I find really powerful. And again, I've observed you doing this over the past few years and just been blown away. Building communities of mm -hmm. interest and support around healthy, happy, successful living. Um, I, I've seen you in so many different communities, you know, business communities, healthy living communities, mindfulness communities, uh, gal pal communities. Talk a little bit about the power of a community and how you're using it to connect people and ideas um, and these kinds of healthy minded values online. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it started by changing my diet and lifestyle and going, wow, this is a gateway to a different way of living. And this, this way of living feels really good. And then, you know, the mind changing how you perceive yourself and perceive others and really just, it opened my whole world up. And then the next piece after that was, of course, I want to share this with other folks. So building community became this natural extension. So I wanted to make a living in a way that was also impactful purpose-driven, mission-driven, um, because I didn't want to go back to my old job after I had this aha. And so that's been really how I've decided to build my life and my career and, and also align myself with like-minded individuals, community leaders, colleagues, entrepreneurs who also want to make a difference. And what's interesting is so many of us, though, we talk about different things um, from business to juicing, you know, we're using a lot of the same principles and practices either in our personal life and in our business. Actually, most of us are using all of the same practices, like we're green juicing and we're running businesses, you know. And so how do you create this holistic world? Because without this holistic wor world of like body, mind, spirit, commerce, right, we, um, we don't feel as good. So I love being able to do that, not only as a profession, but also, you know, when I was newly diagnosed there, I had a very hard time finding the information that I needed to find. And I didn't find it in a way that resonated with me. And as I started to build community and so many predominantly women, but some very brave men came out of the work and started to follow me. Um, I realized that all of the things that I do for myself that make me feel better are the things that they need to. And it, it really, at 
point now, it, again, it's though I wrote a book about it, it's not about the juice, it's about the self care and the self love. And so um, my goal in, in building communities is just to help people build their self esteem and be a touchstone for them that is safe and 100% positive and just like a little oasis online that hopefully will continue to grow and become a very big oasis because in the online space today, as you well know, we need people who are standing up for love and self-care and our planet and the people who live on it. And so um, I'm very passionate about being trying to be one of those people. That's so great. Oh, and how beautifully said. Oh, my God. I think that's you said something before, too, about the gateway. You know, there's so many ways into this world. And then once you're in it, it's like many, many different pathways lead to the central space. And I think I feel like this, and I, this is what I've observed in your work and a lot of the folks who kind of have um, gathered around you who present their own platforms and ideas, but that once you start feeling better physically and you start feeling better emotionally and you start feeling better spiritually, there's this enormous desire to to give back and to grow yourself and to share at a higher level. And so it's sort of this happy, it's the opposite of a vicious cycle, I guess. It's an expansive, really virtuous cycle. I love cycle. that. That's great. Yeah, but it's, it goes, and so I think it's, it's important for people to know that because sometimes I think folks... Um, like we said, they feel like they can't prioritize their health right now because they're too busy working on their career or they're too busy trying to achieve something else. And I often will tell people who are on that kind of hamster wheel of, of intensity, you know, trust your body to help support those larger goals. And, you know, what you were doing before this endeavor, the work you were doing as a photographer, as an actress, it was great work. But I sense that it wasn't really your calling, at least not of now, that you're, you're, you're on a path that I think has changed so many millions of lives. Um, and you couldn't have gotten there unless you were willing to invest and kind of, you know, triggered to invest in yourself um, by your own health crisis. So I, it's, I wish somehow you could have been spared the crisis and gotten all the goodies, but I'm so I never surprised. would have listened. <laughs> It would never work. <laughs> Very well, stubborn. Yeah. And, and thank goodness, because that yeah. willingness to, to push through um, has yes. gotten you all this way. So I want to make sure that folks who want to connect with you uh, can figure out how to do that. But let's start by telling people, when does your book come out? When does this crazy, sexy juice thing hit the, yes. uh, the bookstore shelves? It hits the stands on October 20th, and you can find it in all major stores or online. Um, go through Amazon. You can go through car.com. And uh, I have a lot of really neat bonus gifts for people and thank you gifts because I very much appreciate people wanting to support me, and I want to support them even more goodies. And I'm kind of everywhere. I'm on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. I love Instagram. That's where you can meet my dogs of my children, right? Love so. your Instagram account. We're basically like mutual dog lovers, Chris and I. We so are. We're like, I love your picture of your dog. Your dogs are gorgeous. They're wonderful. They're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. So, um, yeah, I, I'm everywhere. Come find me. And your main site is chriscar.com, right? Yes, and people can connect to all of those different things through that central deal and find out more about your book and your other projects and play. Um, anything else you want people to know or be thinking about as they move into fall? You know, I think you said it best when um, you said you don't need to remove things, just add things to your life. You know, it's a season where things are starting to fade away and change and we're going to have winter and it's a beautiful time to rejuvenate and start to really think about what season of life you're actually in. You may not be in fall, right? You may actually be in a place where you are more in a contemplative area and to let yourself be there and if there's one thing that you want to add to your weekly practice, and as we were talking about your three minute, um, you know, experience or practice in the morning, or me just taking five minutes to lie on the floor or make a green juice, pick one of those things and start to add them to the season. It might not have anything to do with your food. It might be you wake up and say, thank you. I'm so grateful. I love you. Fill in the blank, fill in the blank, Chris. I love you. Let's go have a great day and just take a yeah, well, cards are really good for that. If anybody <laughs> wants to give themselves the gift of an extra little moment in the day, 
also nice to keep at work in the event of a slow moment <laughs> in the late afternoon about the time yeah. you go needing caffeine or sugar. You can skip that, have a juice, and do the cards instead. It's a much more loving way to relate exactly. to yourself. And I just want to thank you again, Chris, for contributing in so many ways over the years to Experience Life magazine and also to RevolutionaryAct.com, where we have you as a, mm -hmm. a very... Um, uh, I guess we would just say treasured co-revolutionary mm -hmm. in the healthy revolution and we really appreciate you continuing to just inspire millions of people and we are um, thrilled to see the book when it comes out and like I said if folks want to check out the giveaway for the cards and learn more about you we've got um, some lovely stuff in, a, in our upcoming issue of Experience Life magazine in the November issue and um that's all I know. I just want to talk to you more and more. And so I feel <laughs> we like will. Let's we, can, do this. we should do this again sometime. Yeah, let's do it again. Thank yeah. you. And it's really, it is an honor. And I just love you and everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Take care of yourself and we'll catch up with you again soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.